Hey everybody, Barry here again. How to fish plate your frame. I'm gonna start this off with a disclaimer and say that this is not the right way. It's probably not the wrong way. It's just my way. So I'm gonna do this the way that I think that would be the strongest and the best way to do it in my ability. If you have any issues with it, please comment because I'm always open to learning. I wanna know what you know. There's always more to learn. Here's the frame. I shortened it last video and uh, took out 24 and a half inches to make this a single cab short bed. And now I need to make it stronger. What I'm thinking is I'm going to keep the cross member here. So I'll just slice that off um, around the weld here. So that is nice and flat. And then I will put a plate around here. And that way it'll make this section here and this section here nice and strong it's not going to want to pull apart here because it would actually have to pull the plate off first here i have some new four inch wide eighth inch thick sheet metal and i thought about using this but then i looked at the sections of the frame that i took out and look how thick that is that is very very thick and also it has lots of length right to the end there is just under 18 inches long so it's perfectly good for that look at the difference in thickness this is eighth inch i'm going to say this is closer to 3 16th so we got a lot more strength there of course i'm not going to have it rounded like this i will just run a section off here and then i'll keep probably four inches or something like that i do like this being thicker and i'll just save that new piece for something later on i'm sure somebody's going to come in and give me a hard time about this being rusty or something but it's uh it's actually not even flaky rust. It's like factory undercoat or something like that. It is just fine. And especially with it being that big of a piece, it's going to have lots and lots of surface area anyway. What I'm thinking about doing then is instead of cutting a hole in my plate to go around this, I'll just cut rivets off, punch all out, and then run a drill bit right through those rivet holes after I get it all plated in. That way it's welded around and it's got bolts in it anyway. It is not going anywhere. So let's get started. Well, that came out a lot nicer than I expected it to. Man, that looks good. What was it Red Green used to say? If you're not a good welder, at least be a good grinder. Something like that anyway. Yep, I am a much better grinder than welder. Dude, with a little bit of high build primer, I don't even think you'd see that. Great. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there you go, that little circular spot right here. And one also right here, that's where the rivets are. I'm going to go punch those out now. Well, there we go. That'll be easy. I know it's not gonna look factory, but it will look better. And as for covering up the end of this cross member here, I'm not really worried. I'll just drill a small hole up through from the bottom. So any moisture or any dirt or anything gets in there, it can just run right out and not rust the frame out. Now, I know everybody has their own ideas on shape. Like I've seen ones that say, do a diamond shape. I don't really have the right area for that. So I won't have any sharp corners. I will do rounded, but let's see. So really 12 inches will give me about two inches on each side actually, because 10 is here, 12, and then we've got two and a half and then a one and a half. So I'll have um, a little bit more overlap on this side, but that's really not a big deal. Even if I have like say an inch back here to go around that pipe, and then come ahead there, that'll give me a little ways past um, 
past there too. So I think I'll go, maybe I'll go 13 just to be sure that I'm getting lots of overlap here because I'm not gonna run out of metal. I've got 18 inches anyway. And just because I like to use things that are always gonna stay the same shape, I'm gonna just make some marks on this wheel so I know this is what I'm gonna use. I will measure six and a half inches, so three and a quarter is right here. In the center, I'm gonna move that back a little bit. Three and a quarter, let's go right on the edge of that weld so that we're even on both sides. Let's go right. Let's go right in the center of that one. So that's about the shape that I'll use. That's pretty good. It's actually about six and a quarter, so maybe I can go down just a touch. Maybe I marked a little high, whatever, no big deal. And the wheel is four and a half inches, so maybe that's what I'll do because my, my uh, angle is right there, and that will only leave me about three quarters of an inch of uh, unbraced welds, so it's gonna have to twist a whole lot. Okay, so we're back to this side here. Maybe I'll move it down to say three inches right there. I think I'm gonna have to eyeball this one actually. Not a big deal. Just to get an idea of where the plate, where the piece is gonna sit. I'm a visual learner, so I like to see what's gonna be welded and where it's gonna sit. I think I'm about right here. Yep, so here you can see this is my actual cotton weld here. It's going to be bolted here, which is going to give it even more strength. So it's nice to have a couple of bolts right here. That's pretty cool. And we've got a lot of area covered. So two and a half, two, and then we're close to seven. So that's nine and a half, 11 and a half inches. So we'll, we'll estimate it at 11 inches anyway of the weld that's actually covered up. And I'll do this over, of course, on the other side also. But I like this plan. That looks really good. That looks great, actually. And if I can do it cleanly enough, it should look about as factory as it can get. So let's get our plate cleaned up and cut out. Well, here's the piece all cut out and cleaned up. You can see the center here. I left it just alone because it's actually like factory undercoat. So I'll just leave that and paint it over. Got it cleaned up around here for the welding. Cleaned up on the back. This side here is kind of rough looking because my grinder actually has a wobble to it. So one edge constantly hits the metal and makes a real big mess out of it. So I'm gonna put that on the back and then the nice flat side will be on the front, and I'll probably clean this up a little bit. Like, you can scrape that off with your nail. It's crazy. 
uh, yeah, I'm going to go weld this on. I think I'll stitch weld this, actually. I don't really see the point in going the whole way around that with the welder. It seems unnecessary. So I'll probably do an inch every inch or something like that. I'll have a look at it anyway. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's go get it welded on. Well, let's see how it fits. Hmm. I like it. It looks really good. And I'll be able to put a clamp on the other side of it and kind of draw that in tight. But yeah, very good. I think it'll look just as good as it will ever look. Come from me anyway. If you do any work at all with sheet metal, these uh, wide mouth vice grips are actually amazing. They'll clamp right down to sheet metal and they also go really, really wide as you can see with that pair and they're awesome. Well, it looks pretty good from here. Not bad at all. I'm, I'm happy with that, actually. I'm gonna put some paint on it. Of course, the welds don't look pretty. I'm using FluxCore. And the welder's really, really giving me issues. I can unscrew the tip, put a blowgun on the end, and out of here will come the big plume of black, sooty looking, I don't know what it is. My spool, of course, you can see is not tight. But watch this. Look at, it's really hard to see, that dark line across my finger. It's like soot coming off the wire or something. It's plugging up the whole whip and it actually spins this wheel trying to push the wire through, which is quite annoying. But power through, suffer through. Anyway, it's done. I like it. I think it looks really good. I drilled through and put bolts in through uh, the torsion bar mount there. Of course, I need to change it, but that's not today's task. That looks wicked. I love it. I'm gonna spray a little bit of black paint on it to make it look real nice. Let's pretty it up a little bit. I've got this Duplicolor truck bed coat. Let's spray a bit on it, see what it looks like. Got some nice, uh, nice texture to it, doesn't it? Nice. That looks perfect. I just want to stop that from rusting where it's bare metal while I'm getting the truck ready before I paint it and stuff. I love it. Man, I think it looks really good. I am not a professional welder or a fabricator, so. You can't expect perfection from somebody who is not a perfectionist, I guess. But I wanted to make sure it's safe and reliable and won't break in half while I'm driving down the road. I don't think at all that that's gonna happen. So if you have any suggestions or tips, tricks for me to improve it again next time I do something like this, because there's always a next time, please let me know because I like to learn things. And what I did here, I learned probably two or three things from the last time I did it. Somebody else gave me suggestions or figured it out by doing it the wrong way the first time. So that's it for this video. That is my quick how I do it, fish plating on a frame. I'm really excited. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other side. I don't need to film it, already did it once. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks my YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you wanna check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash stationworldratrods. YouTube members link is down here. And those are two small ways that you can help with junk like this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.